We know that plant foods contain drastically different nutritional profiles than animal foods. From the conventional wisdom that red meat is bad for you, to vegans justifying their diet by any means necessary. It is no secret that fruits, vegetables, as well as grains are missing something key to human health. Keep in mind, this chart is skewed greatly now due to modern supplements, you know, ways they can use bacteria to make synthetic forms of animal nutrients, as well as extracting those nutrients from larger volumes of unrealistic plant matter, such as soybeans. That being said, we have a list here of 13 nutrients that cannot be found from plant sources in red. In purple, those seven nutrients are either unobtainable without modern supplements or just incredibly deficient on a vegan diet, regardless of what plant foods you're eating. B12, the vitamin that vegans love to brag the most about supplementing, is actually synthesized from microorganisms. Who knew the most popular vegan supplement isn't actually vegan? The form humans require is only contained in living beings, and the roles that B12 plays in just about every aspect of human metabolism, every cell, is an understatement. Cholesterol. Another nutrient vegans will tell you isn't needed. How is that possible when cholesterol is a component of every cell membrane in our body? The idea that our body makes all the cholesterol it needs is something I debunked in my video, do our bodies produce enough cholesterol? EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, only found in animal foods, particularly fish, but brains and eggs as well, is another important component for cell membranes, and in the context of modern medicine, it's actually given as a prescription for a variety of metabolic diseases. It's pretty interesting. They refine and isolate fish oil, and then they charge hundreds of dollars for it. But that hints at its main function as an inflammatory mediator. As with EPA, DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, is only found specifically in those animal foods. It's a key structural component in many tissues, especially the brain, and the evidence for its necessity in human metabolism is so much stronger than EPA that vegans will actually admit you need to supplement it. Up next is AA, AA, arachidonic acid. It's an omega-6 fatty acid specific to animal foods that you don't really hear vegans mention. The human body cannot make this, and just like the human brain requires DHA, it also requires arachidonic acid. High cholesterol foods like eggs and fatty red meat tend to be the best sources. CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, yet another fatty acid specific to animal foods, has been linked to many beneficial things including reversing fatty liver, stimulating weight loss, even regulating genes. The best sources of CLA are high quality raw grass-fed dairy as well as meat. Now, those are the most popular fatty acids that you can't get from plants, only contained in animal foods. Phytanic acid, some of you haven't heard about, I didn't even hear about, I think one of my viewers told me about it, is a fatty acid specific to dairy, eggs, and fish. But the main point here is there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of fatty acids that are contained in animal foods that aren't in plants. And seeing as our bodies are made of fat and you are what you eat, it makes sense as to why all of these vegans decay so quickly. Uh, vitamin D3, definitely another popular one. Certain animal foods do contain reasonable levels of it. Plant foods only contain the D2 form that humans cannot use. Again, majority of vitamin D3 has to come from the sun. That's the only way you can obtain the proper amount for human health. But seeing as vitamin D is a hormone and hormones require cholesterol for synthesis, you know, a vegan diet lacking cholesterol and these other fatty acids is a quick way to lose your ability to properly metabolize this nutrient. Heme iron is a tricky one. Most people do have inactive iron stores in their liver. People just aren't getting enough of the nutrients they need to metabolize iron, such as copper. Although many vegans are deficient in iron, and they probably truly are, it's more of a concern many months to years down the line of following a vegan diet, and probably more of a concern in females than males. Creatine is something that you don't really hear vegans mention unless there's some juice head monkey, vegan bodybuilder, 100% natural, soy protein shakes. But creatine is something humans naturally obtain from meat, fish, it's an amino acid. 
Now, supplements will typically give the user an athletic boost, a strength boost, whatever they're seeking, but when someone is deficient in creatine, such as a vegan diet, it can actually improve your memory. It's taking stress off all of those metabolic processes that are trying to play catch up because the vegan diet doesn't have adequate amounts of amino acids. Carnitine is one of the amino acids specific to meat that plays a critical role in energy production. It transports fatty acids into cells so they can be used to produce energy. Very important in the context of a high fat or ketogenic metabolism and a reliable source is beef. Carnosine, another amino acid only found in animal products. Again, beef is a good source. It's concentrated in muscles and as with most amino acids and B vitamins, plays a role in neurological function, memory, and prevents oxidative damage. Taurine, another big amino acid you guys have probably heard about. Another one you don't hear vegans talking about. It's one of the amino acids needed to synthesize bile acids. Plays a role in antioxidant activity, cell membranes, cardiovascular function. The list goes on and on and on. I did a video, plant protein is not the same as animal protein. So if you want to learn more about what happens when these amino acids are not present on a vegan diet, you can check out that video. There is a slew of amino acids that aren't typically obtained from plants that we didn't mention, but vegans will seethe at the mouth to point out that soy, certain legumes, might contain those amino acids. So although the average person is only realistically getting, you know, 5, 10, 15 of those amino acids from animal foods, it would be hypothetically incorrect to say they only come from meat. But, you know, you can safely say that 99% of vegans aren't getting enough of those amino acids despite all the soy, tofu, bullcrap they eat. Choline is another one. It appears that the form of choline found in plant foods like uh, kale or something ridiculous is not adequate, but when they take soybean oil, sunflower seeds, they're able to make a synthetic molecule, uh, phosphatidylcholine, which is identical to what we use in our bodies. Choline is needed in all plant and animal cells, therefore its functions are vast, including many activities in the nervous system. Coenzyme Q10, Similar to choline in the sense that it mainly comes from meat and fish, but some vegan will tell you to take a few tablespoons of soybean oil. It's very important for energy metabolism, and a lack of cholesterol definitely stresses the body's ability to produce coenzyme Q10. So even more important on a vegan diet. I mean, just those three, you would die from soy boy overload. You have to eat 90% of your calories from soy to get adequate amounts. Various B vitamins are also deficient on a vegan diet, not just vitamin B12. B3 and the correct form of B9, you know, meat being the best source of B3 niacin, along with liver and eggs being a good source of the folate that you want. The same could really be said for just about every nutrient in the context of a vegan diet, depending on your digestive capabilities. You know, these are just the more obvious ones, you know, because again, vitamin B3 is only found in a handful of plant foods and the folic acid form contained in plant foods that are allegedly high in B9 is not what our bodies utilize. Phosphatidylserine is a fatty acid that is really only found in animal foods and we could have lumped this in with phytanic acid and those hundreds of other unknown fatty acids, but for some reason, soy seems to be the holy grail of any missing nutrient. Normally, you know, fish has a significant amount, and there is certainly a lack of research on the plant forms of these nutrients versus the animal forms, and if, if soy was so good for you, it wouldn't cause you to grow tits. Uh, the final two nutrients on this list are calcium and zinc. And despite the paper value of these minerals being decent on a vegan diet, it appears that the anti-nutrient content of the foods that typically contain calcium and zinc, the phytic acid, the phytates, the oxalic acid, the oxalates, prevents the absorption. And combined with a lack of cofactor nutrients, perhaps magnesium or vitamin K2, tends to be the most efficient for most vegans from a mineral perspective. Overall, there are certainly other nutrients you can talk about, but then you would really just get into the discussion about how everyone is unhealthy, not just vegans. But if this doesn't give you a reason to consume the majority of your calories from high quality animal protein, then I don't know what will. 
Uh, so you guys can definitely uh, check out frank-stefano.com down below for Frankie's syringe meat, Frankie's naturals, all that stuff. Uh, if you could please drop a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and above all guys, please share the video on social media if you can. Thank you guys for joining me today. I will see you for tomorrow's video.